What's up everybody, Alex here, and today we've got the Dota Underlord's best builds of the week, and we're starting with what I believe to be the strongest build of this current week, the Brawny Warlock build. And what you've got here is you have Disruptor up here at the front, you can put Chainmail on if you want so he can survive, but essentially what you really want is a Refresher Orb on uh, on the Disruptor. What's going to happen is Disruptor's going to take a lot of the damage first, get his man up, and he's going to cast his uh, Disruption Field, not once, but twice, which is going to completely negate the, uh, the enemy team's ability to cast spells and meanwhile Axe is going to run up, he's going to silence the enemies with his uh, his move, Doom's also going to silence, and you're going to have uh, the rest of the guys kind of come up, and the major thing is here is uh, Ogre Magi is going to be bloodlusting over and over and over again, and what you're going to find here is you're hoping to get a, a Beastmaster uh, with the uh, big time contract, and what's going to happen is, is as these guys die, um, the Beastmaster is going to get a bonus from, uh, from Magi and Warlock, now we're not going to sack the Warlock like we usually do, uh, the reason why is because the Warlocks actually be providing a lot of healing and the Ogre Magi itself is going to be doing a lot of DPS on its own and its newly buffed uh, Bloodlust, in particular when he has Octarine on him, is going to absolutely be fantastic. Um, you're trying to get the brawny guys early so that you can have a beast master with uh, you know hopefully five to seven k health and uh, it is super effective i will be doing a uh, a guide on this uh, i'll post it up above uh, when it's done but this is easily one of the most successful builds i've had in a long time it is absolutely fantastic it mixes silence with uh, just outright dps to create overall an excellent balanced build not to mention the amount of healing you're getting from necrophos and warlock and the witch doctor's stunning ability and the nice thing about this is it scales very well from the early to late game because a lot of these units are early units and you know ogre magi and warlock you're going to be getting in the first three rounds witch doctor the first two to five rounds um you know juggernaut beastmaster these are all guys oh and axe of course these are all guys that you can find relatively early it's a great build for our next build i know a lot of people are interested in sniper right now a hero that was recently reworked now i know a lot of you guys are looking forward to the uh, scrappy sniper build but this one here i think is a little more effective you have six hunters with four heartless uh what you have here is you have pudge abaddon and beastmaster creating a nice barrier for your your ranged units here you have dro which you're going to be getting nice and early uh marana so when beastmaster kind of comes up during the uh the fight if a unit ends up on Marana, Marana's uh, ability will jump her away while shooting a stun. So she's very, very mobile. Um, you know, Necrophos, wonderful amounts of healing. Uh, and it also, he synergizes perfectly with the Heartless. Because what you want is you want the Heartless bonus. Because the Heartless bonus is going to allow for your Rid Ranger, your uh, Sniper, Marana, Beastmaster, and Lycan to do tons of extra damage to opposing units. Abaddon and Pudge, they're basically the meat shields. They're going to stick up for a long time. Uh, Pudge has a ton of health, right? 1,000 at 1 star, 2,500 at 2 stars, and 5,500 at 3 stars. His HP is simply outstanding. And when coupled with Abaddon and Abaddon's shield, you're going to find that Pudge is very hard to take down. So this is a great overall build for if you're looking for uh, to utilize the new sniper mechanics and to utilize uh, hunters if you really want to do a hunter scrappy alliance build with the new sniper this is what i would suggest um you're going to notice i have techies here you're subbing techies in for bounty hunter once you get into the late game what you want is you want to blink dagger on techies because he's going to blink up and he's going to get into that back line he's going to drop his uh, detonation and it's going to do tons of damage to the back line then he's probably going to die realistically uh clockwork has a ton of armor alchemist is going to reduce the uh the armor of the uh the opposing team while doing damage over time Timber saw is here to help protect this uh, this kind of your squishies here from uh, any advancing enemies on the right side. When doing this build, you have to make sure that you really pay attention, especially in the late game, to where your opposition is lining up. Uh, Tinker is going to do a ton of damage with his rockets. Marana again can jump and move as uh, she gets a hit with her with her skill. And remember, that's why we place her on the outside here because she can actually dodge some damage while keeping alive. Sniper, Dro, you know, those are your primary, uh, you know, Sniper's your primary DPS here. Um, you might be looking for something like, uh, like, um... You know a mana item so he can gain some mana per attack so we can get a snipe off early very effective you'll basically delete uh one of the opposing uh opposing players very quickly and long story short necrophos once again a, he goes in with the warlock because alchemist is a warlock as well so he's going to provide some healing hopefully to keep clockwork and alchemist up and at the in the late stages of each individual fight tinker you'll be surprised tinker can often right at the last second get those missiles off to either win you a close match or to greatly reduce the amount of damage you take 
overall this is what I believe to be the best uh, scrappy and uh, hunter and uh, inventor build uh, but realistically I still do think the one previous is a little stronger but hey test it out try it out maybe you'll find more success than I did all right for the next two builds of the week I'm going to be showing you variations of the ever so awesome night synergies so basically what we have here is we have your usual knights you know we have abaddon omni knight chaos knight dragon knight and luna and the bat rider the six knights um and what we're going to do is we're going to splash in razor ogre magi and puck so we're going to have the uh the mage synergy here a 40 percent extra damage on uh, the uh, magic damage which is going to help razor chaos knight it's going to help omni knight it's going to help abaddon um uh, Ogre Magi, hopefully once again with an Octarine, is going to be casting tons of Bloodlust, which is going to greatly increase the DPS of your units here. Uh, Puck is going to be shooting his magic ability across the screen, which is going to do a ton of damage. Razor is perfect in this formation because you often have kind of a bunched up enemy team along the perimeter of your knights, and Razor's skill is going to damage that perimeter. So Razor works wonderfully in this build, especially right there in the middle. And Luna, once again, you're looking for a Mask of Madness. One thing I will suggest, Fall from Grace. Look what Fall from Grace does. It gets you an additional uh, a five armor off, and what you're going to get is going to increase the amount of DPS that your knights are able to do the five armor helps um but uh you know this is overall a very interesting build even without the uh, even without fall from grace the silencing effect is still solid you still get the uh, the puck and dragon knight synergy so your your dragon knight you know hopefully with a moon shard is going to be transformed and doing a lot of damage as well overall a super balanced build and not many of these units are contested uh if you see a lot of people going knights you might have to shift off them but uh, overall, a lot of people are trying Hunter and Scrappy right now, so Knights, uh, you should be able to get some Knights. And finally, if you're looking to rank up, I would suggest this Knight build as well. What you have is you have Disruptor in the front, hopefully with a Refresh Orb. Again, the idea here is that he's going to be silencing the opposing team uh, and uh, basically giving your uh, guys the opportunity to get their spells off first. You have Abaddon and Chaos Knight in the front. You have Omni Knight here, which is basically protecting your Dragon Knight, who you want to have up as long as you can to be doing the amount of damage he's doing. You have Necrophos, who's going to be synergizing with the Warlock ability of the Disruptor. Bear in mind, when Disruptor gets his uh, his two silences off his Disruption Field, that's going to be causing healing for your Knights up front, right? And the reason why we have this formation, not the bunched in the corner, is because we have our Viper. Instead of Puck, we're using Viper, and that allows any Assassins to jump on Viper back here, and it effectively keeps Necrophos, Luna, and Batrider safe from uh, from the, the assassins and plus disruptor who's relatively squishy is going to be up front we're not trying to keep disruptor alive we just want him to cast his silence twice in, in succession to silence the opposing team so overall this is also a very good build um, i'm seeing a lot of success with this as well and once again if you really want to increase the dps this is even better with Fall from Grace because you're going to get to a full negative 10 armor, right? Because now you have uh, you have the Dragon Knight and the Omni Knight that will convert over to Heartless. This is going to greatly increase the amount of DPS your team is able to do. I hope you guys found this guide helpful. These are five awesome builds. Try them out. See which one uh, you find the most successful. And let me know in the comments, you know, if you make any improvements, suggestions, or which one you found to be the most successful. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next week on Dota Underlords Builds of the Week.